question. I think we're getting pretty close. Um, I, I, I want to come back in relation to this to my previous answer regarding the role of mitosense in sense of rule and the role of synolysis in sense of the rule. If I'm right that the magnitude of the crosstalk between different components of sense is higher than I would have said a decade ago, then that means that both robust mass rejuvenation and robust human rejuvenation are going to be easier because we will be able to reach those points with a more incomplete panel of interventions. Therefore, I would say that my, I mean, this is why I have actually reduced my estimate for how soon we have a 50-50 chance of getting to robust human rejuvenation from about 20 years to about 18 years as of literally the past year. In other words, you know, we've definitely saved something. Um, but with, re with regard to robust mouth rejuvenation, I think the same applies. We already know that mice can have their longevity extended considerably more than humans or long-lived other animals um, using very simple techniques such as calorie restriction. I think that we still need a lot more work on the uh, um, evaluation of late onset interventions, things that are started at 18 months or two years of age, which of course is the definition I always gave to robust mass rejuvenation. However, the um, fact is that more of that is now being done as well. For example, Brian Kennedy's group in Singapore, which is, I believe, going to be a really major player in our, in our world over the coming years, they are doing most of their experiments with late onset interventions now. It has finally, the world seems to be finally waking up to the fact that, yes, you're more likely to get a positive result in a nice high profile publication if you start something at weaning. But the fact is, if you want to find out something that actually has long term real significance, you'd better start late.